Today we're going to be working with my kit called Got Glasses and I'm also going to be using a template from my template pack What's Your Angle Volume 2. Hey there, it's Trixie Scraps coming at you with the next episode of Scrap Saturday, uh, where I work on getting some layouts done for my personal family albums and hopefully teach you some things along the way. First thing I want to show you is I've decided that I'm going to use this template here. And um, this actually has space for five different photos. I'm actually going to take this entire cluster here from the bottom off the page and just focus on using this top section here when I get to that point. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you is the pictures that I'm going to be using. I have these two handsome pictures of my husband. Uh, these are from this past November when he got a brand new pair of glasses for $11. I kid you not, these glasses were $11 shipped to our house. Um, he was pretty proud of them. And uh, this was the day they came and he was modeling for them for me. And I had made the remark that he's my own personal Clark Kent. So... Um, that's pretty much what the uh, page is going to be titled, something like that. And I really want to work on taking this um, glare out of the uh, <laughs> glasses here as best I can. These photos were taken with my iPhone 4S, so they're not the best quality, but I'm not really that worried about that. Um, I'm just going to try and get most of that glare out of there and... The quality is what it is. Like I said, I'm not really that worried about it. I just, the page is more for me this time about the story than the actual photos. I think I say that a lot. It just happens that that's what's happened the last couple of tutorials. So the first thing I want to do is add a new layer. And I think I'm going to try to use the clone stamp tool first. So I have the clone stamp tool selected and I want to sample from the current and below layer um, so that it you know obviously samples from the layer below and we're gonna just put our results on this new layer here so if I need to I can manipulate them and do things with them um, for this technique you probably want to have a soft edge brush because if you use a hard edge brush you can you'll be able to see your edges more and I'm also going to turn the opacity down just a little bit maybe to like 75 percent so that I kind of subtle maybe even lower maybe let's start with 50 percent and that kind of helps you um, work with it like a little bit at a time lay down your replacement a little bit at a time so things don't get too wonky on you too quickly oops that moved on me because I was playing with my zoom okay all right so like I said I part pardon the quality of the photo I know it's terrible it's not that great but I'm gonna use my bracket keys on the keyboard will make your mouse or your uh, brush size smaller or larger the two bracket keys on the top that are um, next to the backspace or uh, backslash rather so I'm gonna start with that size and you know I don't know if this is necessarily the best way to do this ordinarily I would try to replace um, the information from one side to the other but in this particular case because there's a glare on both sides that's not gonna work that great so we're just gonna do the best that we can and again like I said I apologize for the terrible photo um, so you just hold down alt and click to sample and actually let me go into my clone source dialog if you don't have this in your toolbar it's up under windows and you go to clone source and um, make sure that you have the show overlay turned on because that'll help you to see what you're actually gonna um, go over the or what you're sampling and what you're replacing with or what you're going to be replacing so I actually, now that I see how large that is, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to click once and click once. And like I said, this is, I turned this opacity down, so it's going to work a little bit at a time. And you might have to click a few times to get it to cover, but just keep um, selecting where you want to paint from with the Alt key. And then you go over and you click to just kind of cover up that glare. And that doesn't look too, too bad. Once it's, you know, the size it's going to be on the page, you can barely notice that I did anything with it. So it's not awful. I'm, I'm okay with that. 
So now we'll work on the other side. I'm going to select from over here. And we're going to gently paint over this glare a little bit at a time until it goes away. Okay. And then we'll work on the eyebrow. Like I said, just a little bit at a time. And that looks much better. Now, you'll notice that I have this section in here, which is just, that's kind of a glare of its own. It looks cloudy, but it's a glare. What I want to do for that is I want to use this nifty, I'm actually going to do a new layer. And I'm going to use this nifty little part of the um, Clone Source dialog box. You'll see it's two rectangles with an arrow between them. When you turn that on, what, what it does basically is it looks at the information on one side and it flips it as you paint. So I want to replace all of this on the inner, inner edge of the glasses. So I'm going to actually sample from, I'm going to make my uh, brush tool a little bit larger. And then I'm going to sample from this side and I'm going to paint over here. And you'll notice as I do, it's actually flipping um, what I sampled around. Now, you have to kind of be patient with this and do it a little bit at a time. Editing over glasses is really, it can be very tricky, but the key is just to be patient. I'm just trying to get both the eyes to look similar to each other. Okay, that's not too bad. I can live with that. Thankfully, the other picture does not really have any terrible glare. It's got a little bit there, but I'm going to leave it alone because I'm really not that obsessed with fixing that. So um, that, that looks a lot better to me. I'm going to go ahead and um, merge those layers. That's what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like now. Not too bad. Like I said, it's just mostly to get that big piece of glare out of the picture. Um, okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to show you how to use the... Um, color range tool to select just this bluish color in my husband's shirt. Okay, so before I um, actually do this work, what I want to do is add a new layer here. I'm going to use my layer marquee tool and I'm just going to draw like a little rectangle here. We're going to be deleting that at the end, but I'm going to put a solid color um, fill in here so that I have an idea of what color I want his shirt to be. Now that we have that, I want to go back to the actual um, photo layer. And I'm going to show you how to use this color range tool. So you're going to go up to select color range. Now this dialog box might look a little sketchy or scary. Don't let it scare you. Um, this is your eyedropper tool. You want to select this localized color clusters. You want to have that turned on. And basically you just click on your photo where you want to select the color range. Now you'll see this square is going to be blocked out here because it's it's noticing what I have overlaid on it. You can just ignore it for now. Actually, so that it doesn't distract us, let me move it out of the way. I can always move it back down. Okay, now let's go back in and do that. Color range. Okay. So it already has part of his shirt selected. I'm going to hit the plus button or the plus eyedropper to add to my selection. Go back to that localized color clusters. Okay, so any place on this mask that turns white is what you're selecting. So you'll notice that it's got most of his shirt, but it's it's splotchy because that shirt is not um, like a solid, it's kind of like a heathered um, color. So it's a little bit tough to select it all, but we'll get there. You just kind of keep clicking until you get it mostly selected. You'll, you will notice it is kind of selecting a little bit of the background. There's a little bit of white back there. Don't even worry about it for right now. It's not a big deal. All right, and then if you want to change what you're actually selecting, you can kind of play with these sliders and it will adjust a little bit what it's accepting and what it's not. So if you turn the fuzziness down, it will actually um, be more precise with what it selects. So I'm gonna turn that back up a little bit and then the range, you, you just kind of have to play with these sliders until you get a combination of the two that selects mostly just the color that you want to work with. So for me, what I want to do is make sure most of his shirt is selected because the rest of it I can take care of by just deleting a layer on the layer mask, deleting what I don't want colored in. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Okay. And then there's this last little bit, the shadow here. And I don't really know if I want to play with that too much. Let's try what happens. Yeah. Okay. We got it. All right. So you'll notice it is starting to pick up some of the color in his glasses, which is okay. I just basically want to make sure that I have the shirt selected and we'll go back and fix that later. Okay, so then once you've gotten that to the point where you like it, you click OK, and you'll see, you know, what basically it has selected. It is missing a little bit of the edge. We can go back and fine-tune that with a brush later on. And if you notice that you're missing, like, big areas, like all in here, there's, like, little dots, you can kind of use your lasso tool, hold down the plus key, and just kind of select over them, and then they'll all be included as well. So, let's see a little bit of dancing ants down here that got missed and if I wanted to I could really play around up here and kind of grab the edge of the neck you get the idea again doesn't have to be like entirely precise and exact because we're talking about really tiny little pixels here I'm zoomed in pretty far um, but just to kind of give you an idea, this is a great way to change the color of a specific thing in your photo if you decide that that's what you need to do. And I apologize that my voice sounds a little it today. I don't know if I'm getting a cold or if it's allergies or what. Okay, so there we go. Oops. Oh no, okay, that's just the shirt itself. And again, this all would be a lot easier if this photo wasn't so darn grainy. Um, it's, it's a little bit tougher to work with things like this when they're grainy. But I'm making do. Okay, so now that we have all of that selected, what I'm actually going to do is probably drop a just a straight color layer in there. So we're going to go with a solid color. And we're going to select that color that we were using before. Now you will notice, you'll see there's all kinds of color here in the background that's picking up. It's not a big deal. You're going to go click on your layer mask, just grab a solid uh, or a hard edge round brush, uh, make sure black is in your foreground here, and you're going to paint over that area that you don't want to change, and just kind of take out any of those areas that it's trying to pick up and change on you. I have to go down and fix that bookshelf in a second behind him in the background. But I have that basically covered and then I need to make my uh, brush size a little smaller. So that. And again, this is one of those things. It doesn't have to be exact because we're going to blend this color in in a second. So you're not even going to really notice the little bit that it's changing the background. All right, so now we've got that all pretty much done, and I'm just going to change and change that to a color layer. And just like that, the color of his shirt is changed, and now it'll kind of go a little bit better with the kit. Now, if you didn't like that, you could, um, like for me, it's a little bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is add a hue and saturation layer. I'm going to clip both of these down, and then I'm going to grab this mask, hold down my Alt key, and drag it up and it's going to replace the layer mask on that hue saturation layer. So when I do the next step, it's only going to change the color of the shirt. And basically what I'm going to do is just drag that saturation down so that it's kind of more of a manly color. <laughs> it's kind of a color shirt that he would wear, but it will go better with the kit that I'm using than this bluish purplish shirt that he was actually wearing in real life. So now that I've done that, I can get rid of this, um, little block of color and then the very last thing which I do with most of my photos is drop a layer a levels adjustment in here and I will probably bring my shadows up a little bit and yeah I think just kinda like that so I'm gonna go ahead and speed through fixing the other one I'm gonna do the same thing with his shirt on the other one but I'm just gonna speed it up just so we don't bore you guys
Okay, so I'm back. You can see that what I did is I just um, dragged over the adjust adjustment layers that I used on the first image over to the second, and I replaced the um, adjustment layer mask on those uh, two layers so that it more closely matched uh, the shirt's area on the second photo instead of the first. So now that I have that done, I don't necessarily want to merge these all the way yet because um, as I'm working with the page, if I decide the color of the shirt needs a little bit more tweaking, I want to make sure that I can get back into those layers and change them up. So what I'm going to do is select all of the layers and then right click and go to convert to smart object. You'll see once I do that, it puts everything in one layer, but it's got a little icon on the bottom of the cor corner of the photo. If you double click that, it will open up a copy of the image with all of your um, level dialog boxes and everything intact so that you can go in and you can tweak. Once, if you do make any tweaks with this, you have to hit, um, you have to save it basically, control S, and then you can close it out and it'll commit those changes um, to the other image, you know, to this main image. Once I drag it on the page here, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to select all of those, convert to smart object, and now I have them both um, as smart objects. When I bring them on this page, I could go back in later on and change them. I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, I'm going to put the photo of him facing forward into this spot. And even though the photo's tipped, I'm probably going to leave him facing that way like that, because I kind of like that. Just move it over a little bit. And then we'll bring this other one in and put it in over here. And this one might need to get sized down a little bit. We'll see in a second. Eh, that's actually pretty good. I like that like that. Okay. So now just to show you what I mean, um, if I decided that I wanted to change this color of the shirt later, I double click it. I can go into my adjustment le level, adjustment layer, sorry, and change this around. And now when I hit control S, you'll see it changes the color in the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that because that's not what I wanted to do. But now, you know, just to show, I have those two layers in there and I can later tweak the colors a little bit more if I need to as I work on this page. So as I said, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this entire cluster on the bottom because I don't need it. I don't need all that clutter in my face while I'm trying to work on this layout. Get rid of all these dumb leaves. Aren't I so nice about my templates, calling them dumb? They're not dumb. Okay, one more leaf. Get rid of that. Okay. Now from here, I'm, I probably don't really have too much more I need to say as I work on this. Um, it's just basically replacing papers and you know adding some embellishments and things I am going to use a cluster uh, that is available with that collection uh, because basically it has these glasses in it now before I go any further there are a lot of people who do not like flowers on boy pages I do not have to be one of those people I like flowers on my boy pages so <laughs> I am perfectly happy with that if you do not like flowers on your boy pages don't use flowers on your boy pages it's a completely a personal preference thing. So I try not to go overboard with them, but I do use a little bit of flowers. My husband doesn't care. The rest of it I'll probably replace with a little bit of stuff here and there, but I'm going to speed the video up from this point because, um, like I said, it's just basically bringing in papers and elements at this point, and I don't really have too much to show you as I do that. So go ahead and watch. Enjoy.
I think that's going to be about it for today. Um, I just wanted to point out that with the cluster, the uh, prearranged cluster that I have here, it does have these little spots of glitter. Um, you could just go in and delete them completely if you don't like them. What I didn't like was they were a couple were up on my husband's face and um, kind of invading down here in the title. So I just used the little lasso tool and just selected them and then used my move tool to kind of move them around where I wanted them. Um, so we'll leave that like that. And I think that's about it. That's all I had to show you. So that's today's episode of Scrap Saturday. I apologize. I didn't have much to chat about. Um, I am going to, going to invite you, if you're watching this video and you would like to get to know more about me or if you have some basic technique or Photoshop questions, please leave a comment below this video because I'm going to go ahead and answer um, questions in my next episode of Scrap Saturday. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for give you, giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next Scrap Saturday. Bye-bye.